This isn't Lake Mead, and this isn't the Colorado River. This is water from the Poudre River flowing into this lake right here. The water from this river is used for irrigation for farmland all across northern Colorado, just like you see back here in the background. And it services over 500,000 people northern Colorado in the Front Range area. What does this have to do with Lake Mead and the Colorado River? Well, in order for me to explain that, I need to journey two hours into the Rocky Mountains to the Continental Divide. There is a human engineering phenomenon that I have to show you in order for you to actually believe. So, let's head on our journey and head up to the top of the Rocky Mountains and the Great Continental Divide. Continental Divide, La Poudre Pass. So this is La Poudre Pass and the elevation is 10,175 feet. It's also the Continental Divide. We're in the Rocky Mountain National Park now once we crossed over the Lupuder Pass. And I believe this is this belongs to the National Park Service. This is one of their uh, stations. The Poudre Pass Ranger Station. This water right here, this little bridge we're passing over, this is the Grand Ditch. Remember this, I'll talk about it here in a minute. Explain what's going on with that. Let's take a short little hike back here to the uh, marker for the uh, beginning of the Colorado River or the headwaters. I forgot my microphone um, windscreen, so hopefully the, the wind is not too bad. It's a little bit windy today. It just comes and goes, so I apologize if uh, the audio is a little bit broken from the wind. You see the peaks of the mountains up here? There's not any snow on, on these ones up here. But when we came in, you could see a little bit of snow on the top of the Never Summer Mountains. So this would be downstream, right downstream here would be the beginning of would be the formation of the natural the Poudre Pass Creek water system. And they have this control mechanism here. I don't know what it's called or what purpose is exactly. I think probably just to control the, the water flow from eroding right there, it looks like. Now, like I said, in a natural state, the water would flow down and it would either go into the Colorado River or it would go this direction to the east towards the La Poudre River, eventually. It goes through a couple of systems um, river systems on the way down. But what they've built here is this water system right here. And this is called the Grand Ditch. So this Continental Divide also divides Larimer County on this side and Grand County on this side. And the Colorado River was right back here behind us. And the Colorado River used to be named the Grand River after the Grand County. Grand County, Grand River. And they eventually um, changed it to the Colorado River. So this Grand Ditch is a uh, collection diversion water system that they built in the late 1800s. I think it finished in the early 1900s. But what it does is it goes some 14 miles along the ridge line of the Never Summer Mountains. And it goes all along the western slope. Well, that water 
normally would have flowed right down to the, the river that collects the water for the natural formation of the Colorado River. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. <laughs> Over 10,000 feet up here. You out of breath? Yeah. Yeah. But this Grand Ditch water collection system collects the water that melts from the tops of the Never Summer Mountains in the spring and then collects it into here, into the ditch, and then it flows, forces it through gravity to, to flow down the mountain until it gets to the point where the Laputa passes and the Continental Divide. It actually goes over the Continental Divide onto the eastern slope, and all of that water that's collected, which is up to like 40% of the snow melt from the Never Summer Mountains that would normally have gone right down into here, which would be the formation of the Colorado River naturally. It would all just flow down here and start in the Colorado River. Well, now it's going to the eastern slope to service the areas of Loveland, Fort Collins, Greeley, and, and those areas over there. So 40% of the water that melts off of the mountains, the Never Summer Mountains, never goes to the Colorado River, never even gets to the Colorado River. It's immediately diverted before it's even seen in the Colorado River and sent to the eastern slope. And here's an example of the water that was flowing when we were at the top of this little ditch. This is another diversion ditch, but it was flowing to the west. This would be the west. This would be the formation of the Colorado River in this meadow right here. It flows under here and goes to the Grand Ditch. Well, all of this water from the Grand Ditch, that water normally would have gone towards the western slope and towards Grand Lake and Shadow Mountain Lake, where it's initially collected at the, down the bottom of uh, the Rocky Mountain National Park. But it doesn't, it goes into the Grand Ditch and goes straight over to the eastern slope towards the Cache Laputa River. So, this water diversion, this water collection diversion system called the Grand Ditch collects up to 40% of the water from the research that I've found. Diverts it from going into the western slope down towards the natural forming Colorado River and diverts it over to the eastern slope. Now, whatever's left goes down the formation of this valley and the natural forming Colorado River and is collected at Shadow Mountain Lake in Grand Lake and Lake Granby. Now there's more over there. We got a storm coming. We gotta head out of here, little girl. So there's more to it than that. Once the water is collected in the reservoirs there, of course all the reservoirs control the flow of the water. So that the water in the spring melt doesn't just go to waste. It is all run off through the river and, and the usage is gone. They want to hold it, collect it, and control the, um, the output of the, the water flow so that the water can be stored and used more efficiently and effectively. But what happens, what happens over in Grand Lake and Shadow Mountain Lake, where the water from the Colorado River is initially collected in the first reservoir, is there is a 13 mile long tunnel that was drilled through the bottom of the mountains that goes through the Continental Divide and pumps and sends water from Grand Lake 13 miles through the mountains through a tunnel all the way over to near Estes Park so again the water that that did make it down the natural forming Colorado River out here in this meadow goes down and is collected in the reservoirs. Once it's collected in the reservoirs, you'd think that it would be able to be on its way to the Colorado River, but no, it's not. It's actually pumped through the mountains, 13 miles through a tunnel they drilled and bored to send water back over to the eastern slope all over again. So if they didn't catch it once on this side, when it's initially melted off of the top of the Never Summer Mountains up here, 40% of it is collected and sent over to the eastern slope. Well, the water that was sent down the Colorado River is collected in the reservoirs. And then it's still pumped through the mountains. <laughs> so it's still pumped through the mountains, literally through the mountains, through a tunnel. 
13 miles through a tunnel all the way over to Estes Park. And then from there, it's pumped into the most complicated water diversion project in the history of Colorado, from what I've read. So this wet swamp marshy area is actually the, uh, the formation. Here's a little, uh, a little puddle that's actually out here, a little tiny pond. You could probably say that that's the actual formation of the beginning of the, the Colorado River. So, the water that's sent over to Estes Park is collected and then it's sent through tunnels and aqueducts and diversion aqueducts and tunnels to all different places throughout northern Colorado. And it's sent to different uh, reservoirs and held and controlled and it's used for hydroelectric power. And I will try to uh, get down to Estes Park and show some of the, the different places where the water comes through. But it's uh, absolutely amazing. All right, so here is the uh, Grand Ditch, and this is the water system that goes 14 miles into the ridge of the Never Summer Mountains. When the snow melts in the wintertime, it flows down and it's collected into this ditch. This ditch sends the water over to the eastern slope. All of this is the western slope. We're on the, just barely on the western side of the Continental Divide. And back here in this meadow is the formation of the Colorado River. So this water naturally would have gone down the western slope down to uh, Lake Granby in that area, but instead it flows through the Grand Ditch and is sent across the Laputer Pass and off into the eastern slope eventually to the Laputer River and over to Fort Collins in Loveland in that area. And then the water that's collected down at the reservoir at uh, Shadow Mountain Lake in, in Grand Lake that, uh, that water is pumped through a tunnel system that sends it through the Continental Divide. 13 miles, I think it's over 13 miles, through the Continental Divide, directly through a tunnel, drilled and bored through the mountain system, and dumps it out over into the Estes Park area. And then from there, it's pumped to different places of Northern Colorado and stored in different reservoirs and, and used and pumped to uh, different locations. So it was like in the 50s, it was in the 50s when we uh, got out of the truck here and then it was in the 80s when we left home. So it was a pretty big difference in temperature, but you get out here and start walking around and you get warmed up pretty fast. So this is where the Colorado River actually begins. The natural formation of it, although a lot of it's collected in the in the Grand Ditch, but right back here in this beautiful meadow is where it all starts. Isn't that amazing? Now you can say you've been to the birthplace of the Colorado River, Bella. So this this fence line, um, I'd say somewhere right around here marks the actual ridge of the Continental Divide where water flows to the west or to the east. We're standing literally right on top of it. And then the Grand Ditch system is right behind these trees where it flows down into the creek down here and then into the reservoir that we passed, Long Draw Reservoir and the water is collected and controlled uh the flow is controlled from there but it's all very fascinating you hear about all the uh problems with lake mead and the colorado river but at the end of the day everybody is taking their share and right here at the continental divide of the formation of the actual colorado river is very fascinating because almost 40% of it 
is collected off of the Never Summer Mountains into this Grand Ditch system and sent over um, to the Eastern Slope. And I, I guess this is probably exactly what that is. This is very close or it might be the exact spot where water would naturally through gravity flow off of the mountains and flow down into the Colorado River Valley, the, the natural drainage that's right about behind us in the, in the meadow. But instead, the water never reaches the Colorado River. 40% of it never reaches the Colorado River. It is sent to the Eastern Slope, where eventually it dumps into the, the Poudre River and is sent over to Larimer County and Boulder County and Weld County and, and used for purposes over there. So I just thought it was pretty fascinating to see, you know, you hear about all the different problems with Lake Mead, but at the origination point, the water never even gets to the Colorado River, never even becomes part of the Colorado River because it's all sent to the, all this water here is sent to the Eastern Slope. So I thought that was pretty fascinating and interesting and not sure how many people are full aware of this, but uh, I think it sheds a little bit of light on the the battle for the usage of the of the water and the control of the water of the Colorado River. This diversion and water collection system was designed to capture the water before it was even sent down to the Colorado River and sent over to the eastern slope down the Cachalapooter River. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and um, we'll see you on the next video. And thanks for watching.